I've never done this before, but here we are. So, as I waste as much time as I possibly can, I begin grabbing all the supplies I may or may not need for this creepy creation. Out of the few things I actually grabbed, I'll only be using water, paint, my beautiful watercolor brushes, tape, some napkins for the wetness, this tabletop easel because, well, you'll see. And last but definitely least, cold pressed watercolor paper. Look, for the most part, this paper's good. For me, it's not. It absorbs way more water than I would like. I almost feel as if I need to work fast in order to get the results I want. And I wouldn't act so ungrateful if I didn't spend all my lunch money on it, but I got hasty and I stocked up before really trying it out. On the plus side though, I hear it makes great paper airplanes. With all the supplies in front of me, it's time to get this thing prepped. And just like that, it's showtime. But first... Ah, fuck. Okay, while we wait for that to contaminate my body, news alone continue. As much as I want these gorgeous Windsor & Newton paints themselves to be the stars of the show, water's gonna have to save the day this time. Because we're using cold pressed watercolor paper, we're gonna just soak the area we're working in, and I mean really saturate it with water. Also, I'm not doing any pencil sketching. I decided I'm gonna paint a scary portrait and I'm using the water to create the general shape. Adding more water to the already wet area is going to allow the paints to flow freely in their own random directions, kind of like we see here. This first layer of paint is going to be used to clearly define the overall shape of the portrait. Believe it or not, this is the toughest part. The only job I have left after this is to fill it in with proper lighting, shading, texture, details, and more water. After this first layer is dry. Okay, now that I have heartburn from the creamer I put in my coffee, it's time to establish some lighting and shadows. This lays the groundwork for literally every layer that comes after this. I have a lot of fun during this stage of the process because I can be a lot looser with the brush without worrying about the placement or accuracy of any details just yet. I simply move the water and the paints around until it looks and feels just right. Because this is a scary painting, I knew going into it that I wasn't going to worry so much about anatomical accuracy. I'm not worried about where the eyes are in relation to the ears, or how big the nose is compared to the mouth. I'm not worried about any of it. I have a general idea of the facial structure, and that's good enough for me. I'm painting something that would scare me if I saw it, in the middle of the night, at the foot of my bed, pulling on my toes. But I digress, you get the point. Imagination is the name of the game this time around. And speaking of toes, it's time to start mapping out the face. I'm adding more water to an already soaked piece of paper because I want the paints to flow wherever the water takes them. In the context of this portrait, this effect is going to help give off a morbid or macabre look, which is exactly what I'm going for. I'm also adding another quick round of shadows to further emphasize depth, specifically around the eyes and the nose. And as you can see, this paper's drenched. It's gonna need some drying time before we continue, so while we wait for that to happen, I'm gonna buy some fake money with real money so I can lose it all in poker. There goes $7. finally time to add some razzle dazzle to this horrifying homeboy and I'm going to start by making him cry. 
this effect creates a really eerie look that's hard for me to put into words. But like with everything else in this painting, it helps add to the overall feel of what I'm trying to create. Before applying the very first layer of water, I had an idea of what I wanted to do. It's always nice when you're able to plan every step of the way, but like with this piece and many others, sometimes it just feels good to create as you go. Things don't always go according to plan, so giving yourself that freedom to go with what feels right will almost always work out. Like here, it felt like I needed a lighter color to blend into the shadows to create more gradual depth. And speaking of shadows, it's time for another layer. This is done to later emphasize the lighter parts of the portrait. Because this is watercolor though, this layer will lighten up once it's dry, and we'll need additional layers to get it as dark as I want it. And the reason for the multiple layers instead of a single dark one is because each layer, once it's dry, helps create the illusion of texture, so it doesn't look like some smooth, boring surface in the end. But now it's finally looking kind of scary, and this might all be in my head, but I'm starting to hear some... During the filming of this video, there was a man simultaneously laughing and crying in the street a couple of houses over. It lasted about a minute and a half, and it stopped as suddenly as it began. So I'm just going to continue with the scary thing in front of me and pretend I didn't just hear what I heard outside. I'm a selfish kind of person. My goal was to create something that would scare me specifically when looking at it. We all have something we're afraid of, but very rarely do we actually want to face it. I wanted to see if painting this portrait would help me in any way, but all it's done so far is get my anxiety to shoot through the roof the entire time. Learn to love before I die. And now with the facial features starting to appear, knowing that this thing is staring right at me is making me even more uneasy. The good news is we're almost done. The details are next, we just need to let this layer dry. So in the meantime, let's lose more money. I'm a these final shadow layers are going to be used to bring out the details. Instead of painting in the teeth, eyes, and nose, I'm doing the opposite. I'm applying the shadows around the details to allow them to finally show. This is why when it comes to watercolor, I prefer to paint from light to dark. For the most part, I'll know what I want to create. And because I put a huge emphasis on lighting and shadows in most of my work, I leave the details to the very end to ensure they don't get lost within all the layering I do. Final touches, however, are rarely planned out for me. I'm adding a light touch of red to keep this from looking like a straight up black and gray painting. And all the additional water that's being added here in the final stage only adds to the creepy effect I'm going for. And personally, I think I came pretty close to achieving that look. I was naked there. This has been a fun piece to do, despite not wanting to look at it directly. I won't add this to my portfolio and I won't be sticking it in a frame to put it up on my wall anytime soon either. In fact, I don't even plan on keeping this thing in my house. I'm just glad I attempted it, finished it, and thankfully, at the end of the day, I have one less sheet of cold pressed watercolor paper to worry about. Do you wanna feel what I feel?